good morning. morning. It's a delight to be here. I do send greetings from Faith Fellowship Baptist Church, and we always remember those times you've had the privilege of visiting us and fellowshipping together. We miss those times. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. That means something, right? What does that mean? We need to do it again, right? Amen. Beautiful singing this morning. Uh, Just a beautiful time of worship. Great time this morning. Great time thus far. Now, nothing, uh, you, you, you can never get used to these great hymns of our Christian faith that gives us a anchor and footing to know how we thus can live our lives because we have a great God who handles everything for us. I, I, I just love it. Amen. Yeah, I get excited about it. Amen. Pastor Cal, we, Cal, we thank you for your invitation and for the rest of the church. Pastor Matt, who's away, and for all of you who are here, we, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have my beloved queen with me for 34 years, Augustine Festy. Amen. Amen. You can clap if you want. <laughs> Amen. My grandson is somewhere. He's out there. <laughs> Benjamin, he's five years old. And uh, he has trusted Christ as his savior. He did that at four. And we're just nurturing him and, and along with the other grandkids too. But we praise God. Let's get into the word. We are grateful for the privilege again. And thank you for your support uh, for us as a church and prayers and your financial support for us. We are indeed grateful for that. And we appreciate Calvary so much. Father, we thank you for, your, for this day. And we thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies. And we recognize it's because of your mercies we are not consumed. Open thou our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. Help us to re- be reminded of who you are and what you have done and what you are doing and what you desire to do in our lives if we keep our eyes focused on you. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. In your hearing, in your bulletin, you have Psalm 145, which is uh, uh, the book of Psalm is the Hebrew book of praise of God's people. And the word Psalm means in Greek word is uh, is a poem put to musical accompaniment, and there's 150 of those psalms, and, and just recalling and recounting of what God has done to people. Uh, this particular song is an acrostic song, which means it correlates with the Hebrew uh, alphabet. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. There's 21 here. We won't, if I went through all of that, we are going through at our church on Wednesday night, we're going through Psalm 119. Uh, so we are at 100 and 119, 136 now, I think, somewhere up in there. Uh, but we're going through on Wednesday night. But this, that shows you if I took all the time that is really needed to do this here, you, uh, you won't be here. <laughs> I could preach that long, but I knew I would never be invited back. So, <laughs> so I, I want to lift a few of the few of the high points that are from the passage that has encouraged me, and I hope it encouraged you. When I am down, when I have moments of despondency, when I have moments, low moments, and I know you don't have those, so just, just know that I'm talking to myself and I, you just happen to hear it out loud. Amen? Amen. <laughs> All right. But if you, if you can identify, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Not only is the psalm was good for the Hebrew people of God, but for the New Testament church. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, and speaking to yourselves, it says that the word of Christ dwelling you richly, teaching and admonishing you in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And, and then it says one of the byproducts of being filled with the Spirit, you speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns. Uh, spirit-filled believer in Ephesians 5.19, spirit-filled believer sing songs of hymns of praise to our God because that's, uh, who else we have to praise other than our God Almighty, amen? First Corinthians, even in that polemic 
epistle, even an epistle where the church has a lot of problems. Uh, uh, they spoke and they, they used the Psalms 4, 14, 26. So throughout the Bible, it's a categorically clear teaching that Psalms are very a part of, of the body of Christ or the Christian tradition. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. We know that song. I sing it some, often, I sing it, and I hope you sing that song and recognize that our God is, an, is the awesome God. Notice I didn't say he is an awesome God. He is the awesome God. Because there are merits of gods out there. But our God is the awesome God. And this psalmist began to say, and, song of, and the, he sings, I will extol you, my God and my king. And he made that very personal. God was his God. Do I recognize that God is my God? The very king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is my heavenly daddy. Oh, y'all have been shouting up and down the aisles over that one. <laughs> the God who holds everything together is my heavenly father. And I, I can say I am somebody because I am connected to the very God of the universe. He said, I will extol you. David may have we remember how he was considered nobody and God handpicked him and said, He's, your brother wasn't the one, but there's another boy out there and his name is David and he may have remembered how he was in a place where he had no business being where we get Psalm 34 that tells us that I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually in my, be in my mouth and the psalmist remind himself that he tasted the Lord and he was good and he had fame, madness, he had fame and he was, he was crazy and God delivered him out of all of his fears. He may have remembered or recalled that. He may have recalled where he said, I was old, I'm young, but I, I'm old, but now I'm, I was, he said, I'm young, he said, I was old, but now I'm, let me get it right. He said, <laughs> David says, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging, but I'm so sorry about that glitch. Amen. David could have remembered all those occasions, even with fighting of Goliath, how God was there. And those are reasons why we should extol him. Give him highest praise. Amen. You ought to think about what he has done for you to cause yourself to praise the Lord. And sometimes we don't always feel like praising God. I know I got a dead one on that one. But if you're honest, you don't always feel like praising God. And those are the times you ought to praise him. Because you can always think about good things the Lord has done. First, he says, God is a great God. He is great. Is he the king of who you are? You remember that song? You are my king. You are the lamb. The lion of Judah. The seed of Abraham. You remember that song? Anybody remember that? No? Okay. It's a beautiful song. He's the king of who I am. Or he is Lord. That's the same concept. Is he the king of who I am? Do I exist and move because of, I recognize that I'm doing it because of his being. And not something I do on my own. The, the psalmist was very much affirming the fact. He will affirm the Lord. He will shout for the Lord. Today and all this season, if I go out early in the morning to go to the store and and um, I see all this red and, you know, white and, you know, yellow. Uh, you know, because that's the chief's colors. <laughs> and folk have no problem extolling the fact that they are going to the game. They got their tailgates ready. They got their food ready. I mean, the store, the, they just pack all of Power your finalia's on to let them know whose side they are. They are extolling the fact that I am going to represent the best team in the nation right now. <laughs> Up for grabs, right? Up for some debate. But Chiefs are the best team, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's, it's my home state and home city, so I, I love them. Amen. 
But if we can install something like that, it has no eternal value. We certainly can install the Lord who is great. Amen. Has it been great? Oh, you have to sound a little bit better than that. Has it been great? I'm still having a hearing problem. Has he been great? Yes, he has. Amen. He said, and David says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. We can't even begin to fathom how great our God is. You know, he had to take Job on a trip to remind him, Job, you, who are you talking to? Do you know who I am? God has to constantly remind us that he is a great God. Amen. And he said, one generation shall commend your works to another. We appreciate young people. We appreciate all the young people we see here today. We appreciate what God has given you. God has gifted you with the ability to navigate through all kind of technological things. Amen. Say amen, young people. <laughs> Give it to God. Make sure you use your talent for the glory of God. Let's give the young people a hand. I really mean that. Because there are a whole lot of young people doing a whole lot of things that they shouldn't be doing and we're not too pleased with it. And when the young people we see doing great things, we ought to applaud them. Amen? And for all of the middle young adults, and you know how that is, you know, everybody want to be a different age these days, we give you a hand. Amen? <laughs> for our senior adults who make the difference, our God from generation, you're passing it on. You are being a torch to pass on the truth for God. You are here in church and not on the fishing banks. Amen. So everybody get a hand. Amen. We praise God because you are part of that generation. We're passing on from one generation to another. By your mere presence here, you are passing on a legacy that one day will be remembered that that was a great thing. Amen. you catch it later after I'm left, gone. you know what I'm talking about. Amen. How great is our God? How great is our God? How great is his name? How great is our God? Forever the same. He rolled back the waters from the Red Sea. And he promised he'll never leave us. Put our trust in thee. Second, God is a merciful God. God is merciful and good. They shall pour out forth the fame of your abundance goodness. And shall sing of the love of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and all of his mercy all over the earth is made. God is gracious. And the good side, the flip side that God is gracious, but God has got a wrath as well. And we cannot confuse that because there's a movement in the country and all around the world. It's just talking about the love of God, the love of God. But God is a God of wrath. God is a God who deals with sin. We cannot underestimate that. We must tell the whole truth about the matter. Amen? Because God's spirit will always thrive with men as he did in the days of Noah. God deals with sin. So while he's a God of love and several times... In this passage, he talked about all, and that theologians call that a common grace, where God shows his love to all people, witnessing opportunity to tell people, you are here because of the grace of God. Amen. If God stopped you from breathing, the doctors would say, well, all our skills, and we thank God for the skills of the doctor. Doctor would say, I've, we've done all we can, now it's left up to God. Because they understand it's beyond their ability. Amen. Oh, I'm grateful for that. God is gracious, compassionate, slow to wrath, and of great mercy. He is good to all his children, even when it may not seem that he, it may have seemed that he has forgotten us, but God has never forgotten us. Whatever you're going through, God hasn't forgotten you. Amen? God makes no mistakes, but sometimes we have to wait and watch him do what he wants to do. Waiting sometimes seems difficult. Will anybody agree with that? How many of you like to wait? No one of us like to wait, right? We live in a technological age where you can do it right then, and text and fax and do all this stuff, and it happened instantly. God is not like that. God moves as he wants to. Amen? And we have to trust him. Amen. Joseph would say, I know what it means to wait. Job would say, I know what it means to wait. Job understood it. Joseph understood it. 
Isaiah said, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount like wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Third one, a powerful God. He said, your work shall be given. He said, all your, all your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. All your saints shall bless you. It shall speak of your glory and of your kingdom and tell of your power. To make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. All thing it just repeats, making sure we pass it on to the next generation. Make sure we pass it on to the next generation. God is powerful. Rahab, Rahab understood that when she, when the spies came to her area, Rahab understood. Say. She said something like this. We have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and and what you did to the two, what he did to the two kings of Amorites and were beyond the Jordan and Sion and Og, whom they vowed to destruction or devoted to destruction, he says Joshua 2.10. Rahab understood what God done. See, people, when they see God do things in your life, they understand it's beyond you. You're on your job, you're having an issue, and you're not torn apart, but you're looking to the Lord, and they're watching you, how you respond, and they'll say, what an awesome God, the awesome God you serve. Amen? Jeremiah says it like this, oh, Lord God, he says, you have made the heavens and the earth, and by your great power and by your outstretched arm, there is nothing too hard for you. Absolutely, positively, nothing too hard for the Lord. Everybody ought to be shouting, hallelujah. It's all right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Whatever problem, every problem is an opportunity for God to show up and show out in your experience. And you can't give credit to yourself. You say, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. And fourthly, God is eternal. God is eternal, God. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures for all generations. God is sovereignly in control. I like that, don't you? And eternally in control. His, he is the faithful God who his kingdom lasts forever. He may have to call through history a man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar who thought he was all that and a bag of chips or Cheerios. Look at the great Babylon I have built. And God said, you're going to crawl like an animal. You're going to look and act like an animal. Your reason going to leave you because you think you're all that. And God did. And it did just as God said. But at the end of the, of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven and reason and my reason returned to me. And I blessed the Lord most high and praised it and honor him who lives for, you can say it with me, for, Say it like you mean it. Yeah. Amen. Forever. And his dominion is ever an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom endures from one generation to another. Daniel chapter 4 verse 34. Dan Neb had to be brought low so he can look high. The prodigal son, young man who decided to say, give me what belongs to me. And he wanted to go off to a foreign country. And he had all friends because he had everything going for him. And he lost his sight and lost his ability to see God as who he is. And God had allowed him to come to himself. And he, he say, and he came to himself. Amen. I'm glad of that. And he spoke to himself. I'm glad of that too. Amen. People don't like you talking to yourself because they like to take you to some places with white coats. But if it's okay to talk to yourself when you're talking to the Lord. Amen. And he said, I will rise up. He came to himself. I will rise up and go to my father and say to my father, I have Luke chapter 15, uh, 16 through 18. And this reminds us of, that God can bring you low to help you to look up high to who he is. He is a righteous and holy God. The Lord is righteous. Everything God does is right. You all know the text in Proverbs say it's there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end that way is the way of destruction. God's way is always the right way. Amen. 
as you talk about the Psalms, the Psalm talked about uh, the wicked man and the righteous man in Psalm 1. Amen. Psalm 15, it talks about uh, what, who shall enter the presence of God and what are the standards there and the moral and the ethical standards in which God requires of man. Righteousness versus unrighteousness. God is always right. And we are tainted with sin, but God is always right. I'm glad about that, aren't you? Amen. A man in scripture, Enoch, who walked with God. The Bible says Enoch walked with God and uh, he was not, but before his translation, he was, he left this word that he, he left this testimony that he pleased God. He lived in an unrighteous culture, but he was a righteous man. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Oh, I love the, the story of Enoch. Lastly, is God is uh, a present helping God. Aren't you glad about that? The Lord is near to all, all who call on him, all who call on him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of those who fear him. He also hears the cry and save them. The Lord preserve all who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. God is a helping God. God will meet you at your point of need. Whatever your needs are, whether you cannot see like you ought to see things that, that God needs you to see. And he said, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out in thy law, say a psalm. 119 18 and you may say that you may eyes may be cockeyed and your eyes may be messed up you said Job said I will make a covenant with my eyes Job 31 1 your mind may be drifting and may not be where it needs to be God says I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me Isaiah 26 3 then your heart he says let the words of my heart and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer Psalm, 1, Psalm 19 verse 14 the hands when your hands are not dutiful as they ought to and you need them to and because you want God to be a ready help to you you have to be willing to do what God has called us to do as Ecclesiastes 9 says whatever your hands trying to do do it with all of your might amen. oh I ought to get you ought to get excited about that amen because God is already help for us. He will meet us at our point. He asked the Hebrew boys in the fire, furnace, fiery furnace. And God showed up and showed out in their experience. And, and the king said, did not we put three, but I see the fourth man, Daniel 3, 335. Ask Rhoda, the young lady who was in the church during the days when Peter and the church was persecuted. Peter had knocked on the door. And Rhoda went to the door. She was so excited. They were praying for Peter's release. And she was so excited. She went back and said, Peter's at the door. Peter's at the door. Girl, what you talking about? Peter's not at the door. Peter's in prison. Now they're praying. They're trusting God and waiting for God to let Peter out of prison. But yet they still don't have enough faith to believe that God has done something beyond what they can ever imagine. Because God can answer your prayer even while you're praying. Oh, I like that, don't you? Amen. Ask Paul and Silas, and that's in Acts chapter 12. Ask Paul and Silas, who were in jail and in prison, beaten because they called on the name of Jesus, and they proclaimed Jesus and, and declared he is the one and only Savior. And the jailhouse rocked at midnight. Amen. I like that. The jailhouse rocked, and they were let go. But they weren't whining and crying. They were singing praises to our God. God is able to do that. Amen. He's able to show up and show out in your experience. And as I close, the psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Help me. My help cometh from the, the Lord of heaven and earth, amen. The Lord who made everything, Lord who sustained everything, Lord who keeps everything in control. Our help, our help comes from him. And there is no greater help than coming from him. Let's make it a resolve as the psalmist closed out Psalm 146. The Psalm 146, he says, My mouth will speak of your praise to the Lord and let all flesh bless your name forever and ever. Let it be our resolve that praise will be epitomizing of who we are. Praise the Lord because he is good. Praise the Lord for who he is. Praise the Lord for what he has done. Praise the Lord for what he desired to do. 
praise the Lord, what he will do in your future because God is a great God and the awesome God, not and, but the awesome God. All the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. Thank you for their trust uh, in you. Help us to continue to look to you. And Lord, keep our praise going, for you deserve it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.